Hi, my name is Mark David Gerson, and today I'm going to read to you two short excerpts from The Voice of the Muse, Answering the Call to Write, my book about writing. Um, for more information about me or about the book, please visit my website at markdavidgerson.com. That's my full name, Mark David Gerson, all one word, dot com. So, The Voice of the Muse is a book of inspiration, it's a book of exercises, practice, tools, techniques, and it begins um, not quite here, it begins a little bit before this, but this is very early on with a question, have you heard the call? Have you heard the call? Have you heard the call that thrills as it terrifies you? Have you heard the call to set something down on paper, to tell a story, one you think you do not know? to inspire others in ways you do not yet understand. Perhaps you fear the pen that stares at you across the desk, the blank screen that glares at you accusingly. What does this muse want of you? Why won't it go away? It won't because it can't. It can't any more than you can ignore it. As long as that siren sings to you, neither you nor it can rest until you answer. You know that. You know that or you wouldn't be reading these pages. You know that or this book wouldn't have leapt out and demanded your attention. Your muse too demands your attention, for you do have a story to tell. You have words to share, words that demand to be heard, words you need to hear. It doesn't matter if you don't know what they are. That's why I'm here. It doesn't matter that what you know or suspect to them scares you. That's also why I'm here. It doesn't matter that you don't know how to begin if you haven't begun, how to continue if you have already started, or how to complete if you find yourself stuck part of the way through. That, too, is why I am here. I am the author of this book, and I, too, hear the voice of the muse, my muse, it whispers to me, shouts at me, prompts me to release its words, our words, onto the page. It urges me to inspire and reassure you, to tell you that it's not only possible, but safe to listen to the voice of your muse and answer your call to write. That's why I'm here. That's why you are here. All you need to do to begin to heed that call is take a deep breath, turn the page, and read on. And when you re do read on, the first question you see on the next page is, when did the call first come? When did the call first come? When did you know as clearly as you know your face that you had to write? When did you know that an imperative deeper than any that you have known was crying out for you to express it in words? When did you know? How long has it been? How long has it been since you heard that voice? How long until you acted? Have you acted? Or have you fled? Whatever or whichever the time is now to set pen to paper, you know it. You know it as surely and truly as you know that face in the mirror. It is the face that calls you to write, for you are your muse, if you allow that to be, if you allow yourself to listen. You listened, you say, and here you are, pen poised over a sea of nothingness, wondering where that ocean of stories is. Wonder no longer. That ocean resides here in the inkwell of your pen. It resides in the hard drive of your computer. The story and stories you have been called to write exist already. But wait, I hear you say. If they exist, why must I write them? If they exist, they have already been told. I'm done. <laughs> Would that it were that simple. Those stories exist in another realm. The realm of dreams. The realm of fancy. Another dimension beyond the three we know, beyond the fourth of time as well. Somewhere beyond earth and sky, in that fantastical place where everything is possible, where miracles occur with each breath. That's where your stories exist. 
In your heart, that's where your stories exist. Encoded into every cell of your being, that's where your stories exist. Have you ever kept track of your dreams? If you have, you know how important it is to jot them down the moment you wake up. For if you don't, you're likely to forget them. It's the act of writing them down that gives substance to what is otherwise ethereal. It's the act of carrying them from the kingdom of dreams into the physical reality of ink on a page that gives them substance, that allows you to connect with them, that allows them to touch you, that in a real sense makes them real. So it is with your stories. They exist just as your dreams do. But it's the act of setting them to the page, of letting one word follow the next, and then the next, and then the next, that makes them real, that in effect publishes them. That's right. The act of publishing is an act of making public. When you take your stories, those stories that have exist an existence only in your heart, an existence even your brain mind may not see, when you take them and draw out the letters, stretch those letters into words and those words into sentences and paragraphs, magic happens. You take something that exists only in the airwaves, like a radio signal that broadcasts at a frequency not normally audible by the human ear. You take that signal, which is your story, and you translate it into a frequency that is audible. In doing that, you give it and yourself a new kind of life, a life in the public realm, a place on the radio dial of your life. Perhaps you don't seek to have your work published in a conventional sense. Or perhaps you do. At this moment, it simply doesn't matter. At this moment, all that matters is answering that call to write. All that matters is tuning into that frequency, that normally inaudible signal, the one on which your muse alone broadcasts, tuning into it and taking down everything you hear. Everything. Without judgment, without question, without second-guessing without censoring. Your muse broadcasts to you on your private frequency. It is for you to tune in with the radio dial of your heart and transcribe. No, you will not be channeling. You will be co-creating, opening to the energy of your muse, running it through the filters of your language and experience, and committing the resulting words, thought, ide thoughts, ideas, scenes, poems, memories, and songs to the printed page. You are turning what already exists in the air around you, just as radio signals exist in the air around you, into something physical. Something you can touch. Something you can hold. Something you can read. In doing that, you are giving it a life it would not otherwise have. If nothing happens beyond that, you will still have accomplished one of those breath-by-breath -breath miracles I spoke of. Even if no one else sees or reads it, it has been published. It has been given a physical life it never had before. And just as every action in the universe has an impact on every being in that universe, or so our quantum scientists would have us believe, your words made manifest will have their effect. And if you do move from that point to print, why, well, that's a bonus. But that is not our starting point. Our starting point is you. You and your muse. You and your story. You and the word. If you'd like to know more about the voice of the muse answering the call to write, you can find out more about it on my website at markdavidgerson.com. That's markdavidgerson, all one word, dot com. You can also share your writing experiences with me. You can contact me through the website and I'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day as you surrender to your muse and allow its stories, your stories, our stories, to express themselves through you.